Hello, this is Patrick O'Shaughnessy, and this is the eighth module in the series, Statistical Methods for Analyzing Data Obtained in the Lab or Field. I'm going to continue this discussion on continuous random variables from module seven, and in this case, focusing in on what's referred to as the log normal distribution. And here is our map of the modules associated with statistical tests. As you can see, this module is not essential for continuing on to the 10th one uh, in terms of understanding what a statistical test is. But if you have data that you are pretty convinced are, is going to be skewed uh, and or comprise a log normal distribution, then certainly um, listen in on this as well. Okay, the log normal distribution, especially if you're measuring um, items out there in the in the field in the real world often very often they are going to end up with a skewed distribution this is a right skewed distribution as shown here uh, not left it's how the tail is you can see a broad tail area that is corresponding to a right skew and an example is the diameters of dust particles in the air where you'd expect many of them to be very very small but there are a few larger ones that are uh, still capable of maintaining themselves in the atmosphere, but very few of them as you get bigger and bigger and bigger. As, as one example, as many, many others. So long normal distribution is very important to uh, field scientists, which is why it's being discussed here. Okay, that exact same distribution I just showed you, uh, if a log scale is applied, as you can see, we'll almost magically shift it into something that looks perfectly normal. So that's one way to determine that you have a log normal distribution if, if this can be done, say with a histogram and you put it on a log scale instead of a normal scale. So that, um, again, helps to understand its log normality. Now there's, unfortunately, because of the log aspect of this distribution numerically, there are, there's necessarily a different way to determine or to enumerate what's called the central tendency and the spread. And they are called the geometric mean and the geometric standard deviation when you're dealing with a log normal distribution. They're no longer just the mean and standard deviation, the geometric mean, geometric standard deviation. You can see that they give it a little sub G to delineate them. So how do you get at those values? Well, the easiest way is to convert your data into the logs of those values. So you just have another column, use the log function. Again, I'll demonstrate this further. And then simply compute the average and standard deviation as you would in any other types of data of these log transform data values. Then once you know what they are, you transform them back. So if mu is the log, is the average of the logged values, then 10 to the mu will end up being uh, kind of transformed back into the real numbers, the real units, and that will be mu sub g. Same thing with sigma. Sigma is the standard deviation of the log transform data values, but to convert them back to get sigma g. There's also a function in Excel called the geo mean, and the, geo, the geometric mean, which is the square root of the product, as you see, of all your data values, it's the nth root of n product. That, that function is in Excel and that is capable of, of computing, computing the mu sub g, but I am not familiar with a automatic way of computing the geometric standard deviation in Excel like that. And this function can crash on you, by the way, because you're doing a massive product underneath here if you have a lot of data values. Okay, so now back to this graphing technique in order to determine whether you have a log normal distribution. You know, if, you, if a normal distribution plots as a straight line on normal probability paper, then no surprise that a log normal distribution plots as a straight line on log probability paper. 
So here we have a log scale now for the x as versus a normal, and we have the probability scaling that I showed you before, which will straighten out again a log normal distribution. So this becomes the test for log normality if you end up a straight line uh, on such paper. Okay, so back to the geometric mean and standard deviation. Uh, it's worth noting that there is no distinction numerically between the mean and the median. They are both uh, identical numerically when you deal with a log normal distribution. They're both at the 50% probability value. And the geometric standard deviation is, is a bit odd, <laughs> as we'll see. So recall for a normal distribution that you can get at the standard deviation by simply subtracting the value at 84%, as we saw, minus the value at 50%. So we can do that via an equation here. For a log normal distribution, it's exactly the same, except you're dealing with the logs of the values. So it's the log of sigma g is equal to the log of the value at 84% minus the log of the value at 50%. So we are left with this equation, which doesn't get us straight to sigma g. You see, we're, we've, de we've determined this log of sigma g. So we'd like to know what is sigma g? What is that uh, geometric standard deviation? Okay, well, we'll start with the equation we just came across, which perfectly defines the log of the sigma g. Then given the properties of logs, this subtraction above can be turned into a division. Now we have log log on both sides. So this is an easy transformation back by applying 10, you know, the exponent 10 to the log of both sides and it falls out immediately to sigma g is this ratio of the value at 84.1 relative to the value at 50. So we've gone from the subtraction of logs to in actuality a ratio of these two values. So that is kind of mysterious in a sense because a ratio has no units. So be warned that sigma g has no units. You cannot say uh, this distribution has a geometric mean of 10 plus or minus a geometric standard deviation of 2. You can say that if there is not a geometric standard deviation, right? If the corollary is the, I have a mean of 10 plus or minus uh, two standard deviations in the same units, right, of meters or whatever they are. Can't do that with a geometric standard deviation. The best you can do is say I have a geometric mean of, say, 10 meters, and I have a geometric standard deviation of 2. That's the best you can do. Now, that means what, what does a geometric standard deviation even mean, then, in this context, right? Um, the values go from one as the uh, as a standard deviation of, of what would be basically a spike of a probability distribution. All the all the values have the same number. Every every measurement is the same. That is a sigma g of one. A sigma g of three or thereabouts is getting to be a fairly broadly skewed distribution and a sigma g of five or six is almost unheard of in the environmental world it's extremely broadly dis distributed so it's not unheard of to think of sigma g's as somewhere between one and three to four and you just have to realize that that's what they are and um, that's about the range that they exist in Okay, back to determining this graphically. Again, we have to go to a log probability plot, but it's the same idea as we had before, where we can easily pick off the median value from the probability of zero, a z of zero, and come down and look at it that way, either as the log of the measurement or the measurement itself using a um, graphical scaling. And it looks like it's a little over two 
2.2 maybe. And the geometric standard deviation is going to be the value here at 84.1% divided by the value at 50% rather than subtracted by. So let's go through a brief example here. So a thousand air pollution samples were taken by an instrument over many, many days. This is the distribution of them. You can see it's highly skewed. I had um, Excel analyze them via the descriptive statistics uh, function. It gives me the mean, standard errors, median, etc. cetera. Um, but it also gives this kurtosis and skewness, which gives you an idea of how skewed um, the values are the distribution is skewness as you see here it measures a lack of symmetry of the distribution where zero is perfect you know a perfect normal distribution so here we have a skewness of 3.83 so that's fairly highly right skewed kurtosis uh, gives you an indication of kind of the flatness or peakedness of the, the distribution relative to the normal where three is perfect for the normal distribution. And as you can see here, we have 22. So this is highly peaked relative to the expectation of a normal distribution. Okay, so here you see where we have applied our knowledge of this graphical technique of determining whether something's normal or not. And when we apply highly skewed values to the normal probability plot, they do not line up as a straight line, kind of as expected. They're highly skewed. Many of the values are crammed down here uh, at the peak values, and then the trailing kind of skewed values are, are forming a, a curve off in this direction like this. So this is a, a typical um, result you, you will get when you try to apply what are skewed values to a normal probability rate you would expect it to be a straight line if they are normally distributed. Okay, so now we apply a log scaling to the x-axis and you see them straighten up almost perfectly. Okay, so there you, you go. You are now convinced that this is a log normal distribution when you end up with a linear, a straight line like this on log probability paper as versus normal probability paper. Okay, now we just apply the um, information we already know to use the log function in Excel on all of the thousand values that we have, which defaults to base 10, and then apply the average function to get an average value, in this case minus 0 0.0017, and use the standard deviation function to get a value of 0.4165 of the log values and then we back transform as shown here to get the geometric mean very close to one part per million and a sigma G of about 2.6. And then again, applying the graphical technique, you can see where the 50% line comes down right around one. So from the graphical technique, you would choose one and to get at the standard deviation, geometric standard deviation, we have to pick off the value at 84.1%. Uh, chose 2.6 from this scaling. Again, this is a log scaling down here. And again, we have to remember to then divide the 2.6 by the value at 50%, which happens to be one. So we end up with a sigma G of 2.6. So these values are very, very close to what we calculated numerically.